Welcome to the video presentation of Module 2 of this course. I trust that you would have already gone through the first video of Module 1 as well as the corresponding lecture notes since each video builds on the topic. In this presentation I will be highlighting the major points of lecture notes for Module 2. I trust that it would assist you in getting ahead in this course. Before we go through though, I want us to have a word of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege of prayer, where we can call on your name at any time. Thank you for all the members of this class. May you continue to pour out your blessings, wisdom and understanding on us all as we delve into this module. Continue to bless us, I pray. Amen. We are looking at Introduction to Curriculum and Instruction, Part 2. Now that you have a clearer idea of what CNI is all about, we will now take a closer look at the nuts and bolts of CNI. The overarching theme of endeavoring to do things and create conditions for greater learning to take place in our classroom will again dominate Module 2. In this module, the goal and objectives leading to the learning experiences will be the main focus. The following are the learning outcomes for this module. Determine the criteria for constructing appropriate curriculum objectives. Discuss the principles for selection and organization of learning experiences. Outline the developmental stage, stages of curriculum progression in the Caribbean region. Before we go into this module, though, I want to share with us some quotations. Socrates said, I cannot teach anybody anything, I can only make them think. William Arthur Ward says, The mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, the great teacher inspires. The greatest teachers teach from the heart, not from textbooks. The student being taught is not as important as the student being influenced to want to learn. Teaching how to rather than what to think is the decisive purpose of education. The ability to teach well is to have the capacity to facilitate imagination and lastly, the consequences of education does not bring wisdom, but the persistence to acquire it does. Let us dive into this module and look at the mean of criteria for curriculum assessment. Criteria are set standards to be followed in assessment. Standards are set upon different elements of the curriculum being tested. Criteria will demonstrate the different levels of competencies or proficiency of acceptable task performance. Now goals and instructional objectives are formulated and specified for the following purposes here. They give direction to where students need to go. They meet the requirements specific in the policies and standards of curriculum and instruction. They describe the student's level of performance. They monitor the students, the progress of the students. But before goals and objectives are to be formulated, certain criteria elements to be included and these are content from the objectives what content should the students learn then we have behavior what will students do to indicate that they have learned then the criterion what level of performance should be should the students have to master the behavior and lastly conditions under what circumstances should the work in should 
the work in order to master that behavior. So that as we prepare our objectives for our lessons, these four elements or criteria must be part of those outcomes that we write. In terms of lesson planning, I have prepared a PowerPoint entitled The Planning Process in Lesson Planning. Please take some time to view it. I've included the web page here with the link. I'm sure it will help you to it would aid you to clearly understand curriculum and instruction. Now in every 21st century organization today, there is always a vision statement. This is a statement that tells you what an organization is all about. From the vision statement comes a mission statement. This is a smaller version of what the vision is, making it much more concise. From the mission statement comes goals. These are very broad. From each goal, there would be aims. Now, they are a little narrow, but still pretty broad. But from each aim, you have what we refer to as general objectives. Now, these are objectives that are still very broad in nature. From our general objectives will come our learning outcomes. It is sometimes referred to as learning objectives or instructional objectives. In our lesson plan, our learning outcomes indicate what our students will learn after we have taught a class. From our learning up outcomes come our activities. These are what the students will follow or do in order to enhance the learning process. So we have listed here the objectives. These are what you as a teacher hopes to achieve in a particular, particular lesson. So your objectives are for you as a teacher. The learning outcomes, these are what you intend to have your students learn at the end of your class period. The assessment is the process to help you find out if your learning outcomes were successful, if learning actually took place. And then the big question is, how would you know if learning has, take, has they actually taken place? The answer to this question is actually by the way you wrote your learning outcomes in the lesson plan. The action words you use in writing your learning outcomes is the key to you getting to know if your students achieve the outcomes. In the PowerPoint I mentioned earlier, which is on the course web page, there are outlines of all the domains of Bloom's taxonomy and for each a list of those action words are provided. Make sure that you use those words so that your lesson plans would have the action words that would help you to accept or assess your students much easier to ensure if learning is really taking place. As we look at the scheme of things with regards to instruction, we see that there are two distinct approaches. One is called a generative, which is student-directed classroom, and the supplementive, which is teacher-directed classroom. As we move to the 21st century, the research is definitely showing that the student-centered approach in our classroom is the best practice in terms of our approach. In the lecture notes for Module 2, you would find a comparison of teaching approaches as well as the guidelines for selecting an instructional approach. This would be helpful in helping you make the right decision as you go to your classroom. 
Curriculum also have criteria that acts as guidelines and standards for decision making. Remember, criteria are sets of standards to be followed in assessment. The objective of a curriculum or teaching plan are the most important curriculum criteria since they should be used in selection of the learning experiences and in evaluating learners' achievement in the classroom. What are some of the characteristics of a good curriculum? Continuously evolving, it's changing. Curriculum is never static. It's based on the needs of people. When you prepare a curriculum or when it's been prepared, it is not done in a vacuum. Curriculum is democratically conceived. In other words, the opinion of all the stakeholders are going to be used in the development of such a curriculum. The result of a long-term effort. Curriculum is not an overnight thing. It's a long-term process to get the best results. It takes time. Has a lot of details in a good curriculum. It tends to provide for logical sequences of subject matter. In other words, teachers can be able to use the curriculum to help provide sequence in subject matter. There are some distinctive marks of a good curriculum. It is systematically planned and evaluated. It has order. It reflects adequately the aims of the school. It maintains balance among all aims of the school. So in other words, it doesn't just it is not one sided, but it takes in the whole picture of the school. It promotes continuity of experience. It arranges learning opportunities flexibly for adaptation to particular situations and individuals. It utilizes the most effective learning experiences and resources available so that you can have best practice in your teaching and learning process. And lastly, it makes maximum provision for the development of each learner. As I end the first part of Module 2 of this video, I would like to share with you the Ten Commandments of the Primary School Teacher. This has been derived from my years of experience in the field of education. Commandment number one. Thou shalt have a sound knowledge, keen interest, and practical experience of the subjects you're going to teach. If you're going to be a teacher, you must know what you're going to teach. Thou shalt communicate well to the students you are going to teach. Having a sound knowledge and not being able to communicate to your students, you would not be an effective teacher. Thou shalt know how students learn and be aware of the different ways they do, so that you can provide different ways of letting the students demonstrate how they learn. Commandment number four says, Thou shalt have a glowing, warm personality, you must care for and like your students and really want them to learn from your teaching. If you do not possess those characteristics, the students are going to pick it up very early and they're going to make your life very miserable. Commandment number five, thou shalt possess the ability to make what you teach as interesting as is possible or as it can get. Variety is the spice of life. Commandment number five, number six, thou shalt be patient, considerate, compassionate, and emphasize with students. When you do those things here, they recognize that you are also concerned about their well-being. Thou shalt possess the ability to continually learn as you teach, as the subject changes. I've always said that if you are a teacher and you are teaching and not learning in the process, something is wrong with your teaching. Thou shalt know how to use educational and informational technology to help influence the teaching and learning process in your classroom. Technology is the way forward. I do not believe that technology would ever replace the teacher, 
but students, but teachers who do not make use of technology, I believe sometime they will be pleased. Let's endeavor to do our best in this regard. Climate number nine. Thou shalt be a leader in and out of the classroom. What a teacher is comes for much more than what he or she says. Teaching a lesson is one thing, but influencing a life is, is another. A rich man said, the teacher who is at the, attempting to teach without inspiring the pupil with a desire to learn is hammering on cold iron. And the last one, thou shalt avail yourself of effective preparation and planning skills. If you fail to plan, then you are planning to fail. Also, I guess you have heard of the seven P's. Proper prior preparation prevents pathetically poor performance. This is the end of this video.